Welcome back, guys. We are close to the middle of the month. Hey, how about that one? Here you go. Hi, this is Ray Smith with Sandra Johnson and also have Danielle Johnson. We are the host of the I Am Real Estate Show. On our show today, we're going to have Diane Geisler, who is the owner and designated broker for Indie Realty. And later on the show, we're going to have Michael Gagner, who is the owner of North Men Beard Company. With uh, Don being in the, I'm going to say Don Google, Don Geisler being in the, in the uh, office today. Don, what's going on today in the market? Oh, wait a minute. Market, hot or cold? Hot or cold? Boy, it's really hard to answer, first <laughs> off. <laughs> That's thanks. like the Tucson weather has yeah. been lately. It changes day to day, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, first off, thanks for having me on again. It's like, uh, you know, my favorite hour of the month. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the market is, I think, still exactly where we expected it to be, you know, right now, uh, in that we had come out of kind of a, a little bit of a quiet time last year that... Uh, um, as I think we've said before, you know, a couple e external factors from yeah. interest rates to, you know, inflation, all kinds of things kind of slowed it down mm -hmm. and in some ways put it on a, a pretty significant pause. Right. But, um, you know, now that I think we're moving past that and people have adjusted to it uh, mentally and, and things have actually changed a little bit and we're seeing lots and lots of buyer activity and, you know, we're moving back into now where we're seeing... Um, multiple offers on property and people getting beat out, you know, on, on properties. And so it, it does feel like it's a little localized right now and that we still have to make sure, you know, that we have our houses market ready and priced appropriately mm -hmm. um, or, or else they might not get the attention that we want them to have. But a lot of places we are seeing them um, get multiple offers and, yeah. and a lot of activity out there again. And we've talked a little bit about the fact that, um, if you look at the city kind of central will will make market changes um after the more exterior areas so um not mm -hmm. only have we seen those changes starting in central but we're starting to see them in the outer lying areas more so as well yeah it, it's really cool and it's it's very fun you know feeling all the excitement out there that that buyers have you, you know yeah. and so because that's good for everybody, you know. Um, everybody's benefiting. Sellers are are benefiting, and buyers are are back in the market. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a very exciting time. So, like I said, things are very very localized. And mm -hmm. um, you know, if we if we have a, a house that has sat on the market through that period and is mm -hmm. is we feel like it's still kind of stuck in the mud, it's a great time to step back. You know, take a <coughs> look at it with fresh eyes and think about you know remarketing, getting you know getting things going so yeah we've actually recently been in that um multiple offer situation with a buyer and so i did not expect it to be as brisk as it was um especially <coughs> given uh, maybe the condition of the property i thought we you know you had to be perfect perfect right now and that was not the case but it was also a you know an area and a piece of property that fits a lot of people's demographic and and what they need and so definitely is some competition out there yeah and i think that you know the fact still remains right now that there's less inventory than mm -hmm. there are interested buyers and mm -hmm. so you know how do you define interested buyer people that are actually out there pre-qualified looking and making offers on property you know all the way down to the people that say boy i would really like to get into this market but mm -hmm. for whatever reason they're they're not jumping into it but inventory uh, is still lower than demand you know, mm -hmm. right now. So. You know, actually, another thing that I don't even think we've talked about yet is I know personally I've seen kind of a more of an uptick in the investor text messages, you yep. know, so they do that. They'll text us quite frequently and say, hey, do you have anything? And and for a while there, I feel like they were being very conservative, not mm -hmm. knowing where the market was kind of going to go. And I'm feeling that pressure again, a lot of inquiries coming in from investors saying, hey, you know, do you know of anything that's coming up? So, yeah, I mean, I think um, nothing was ever, you know, dire, mm -hmm. you know, but I think we talked about last time that in a, in a given month, whether it was, and I don't remember the numbers exactly off the top of my head now, but November, December, they would typically be 12, 1400, you know, new pendings mm -hmm. per month. And we were sitting at 800 right. Right, for, you know, a couple months in a mm -hmm. row. So things were happening, but it was definitely chilled down a little bit yeah, and, and little I think bit. that activity had 
chilled down a little bit too but um i just people are on fire with demand for property right now still but it, so in february i think was the month where we had the highest and the lowest interest rates all and not in that order necessarily <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> where we were talking with uh, john spur with inspired life mortgage and we're like you know okay where, where are we at this week because it right. really truly was just all over the map and well, I mean, in the way he describes it is, you know, I sort of almost envision him as a like a day trader, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like he's he's looking for the best deal for for his clients. And, you know, I'm the way he describes it is minute to minute. It's yeah. like yeah. changing and he has to hit the button right at the right time. You know, so it, it, it changes drastically all the time. As the designated broker of um, Indie Realty. You see a lot of agents come in and out and things, and you've always harp on the fact that you're looking for the better, the best agents that's willing to do the best for their clients. So talk a little bit about that, and what do you think a, a good agent, what are some of the tools that a good agent would have? Um, well, I like this conversation, and, and I think, you know, number one is that, you know, not to be overly self-serving, but, you know, agents need to be supported. You mm -hmm. know, one of the things that we're um, very focused on at Indie Realty is having the support for our agents and helping them become the caliber of agents that they want to be and, and giving them what they want. Um, but uh, kind of one of the things that I'm always, you know, harping on a lot is that the entire industry is changing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is like if, if um, we as the professionals who drive the industry insist on just doing things the way that they've always been done because that's the way that they've always been done then we'll get left behind mm -hmm. you know and so what are we looking for you know in agents is to be able to be creative to be able to get out of the box you know to be able to represent your clients and actually demonstrate what the value of having a great agent is you know Can i tell you something don i was just at lunch today and i was talking to a young man and what he said to me is that we were talking about the Sands Club. And he's saying, you know, because Sands Club doesn't have a history, a long-lasting history, you have a lot of chance to do whatever you want to go do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think about Indie, Indie Realtor, being an independent realtor. Not only are we a young company, but now we don't have any past stuff saying that we have to do things. There's a hundred ways. We did it for a hundred ways. We did it this way for a hundred years. We did it that way. We can't have to say that. We, we can make what we think is the right way to do it or the most inventive way to make it better for our clients. Right. And I... I agree with that. And I think, um, you know, in our next segment, we, we could move into some examples of, of you know, kind of what, what I'm talking about a little bit. But I, um, you know, you mentioned us being a young company, a little bit over a year. And, but even though we're a young company, we have so, we have decades of experience, mm -hmm. you know, inside the four yes. walls. And I just had one of the most gratifying experiences that I'm always reaching out to agents and um, an agent out there that's very productive that I really respect, super professional, you know, mentioned that, we're on their radar, that Indie Realty is on their radar, that they see how we're impacting the community, what we look like in the community, and that they're very impressed. And it was, it was just such a great uh, conversation great. you know, to have with that person. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show on 1030 AM KVOI The Voice. We'll be back after the show, talk a little bit more with Don about agents, agents' histories, life of being an agent. The love of being an agent. <laughs> <laughs> Everything real estate agent. 22 years. Must be something good about it. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back to the I Am Real Estate Show. Wanted to say something about today. Is, um, we're back here with Don Geisler, who is the designated broker and CEO of Indie Realty. And we had some things happen today over the last couple of days with one of our, one of our, one of our hosts. Um, I think, Danielle, you had a relationship change. Yeah, my relationship status on Facebook did change. You know, some people, they say that it's not official until it's Facebook official. So I went ahead and I made the announcement that I am in a relationship with real estate every day. <laughs> Everyone knows it is not changing. It's official. So there we go. I love that. <laughs> <clears throat> I gave it a, a, a good uh, like or love, and I'm like, wait a minute, or should I be saying ha ha? I don't know which. I don't know if I'm supposed to go on the funny route here, or like, oh yeah, this is really cool. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I am very happy. There's no question about Danielle. Out there. It's good. As we do and do a lot of real estate issues and a lot of stuff, paperwork is one of the things that you have to worry about doing in the real estate world, and people don't realize how much things how much paperwork has to be done and how important it is as you as, our, as the designated broker has to follow 
the paperwork though, from the from the agents. How important is you from your agents to make sure that paperwork is correct? Well, I think you know we have systems in place to ensure that our agents are delivering you know top quality service within the parameters of what what is required by you know the code of ethics, laws, rules. Um, and uh, you know we're really on top of that, and we have lots of training sessions and lots of forums and lots of groups, and um, we spend a lot of time just making sure that our agents know um, what's going on out there, what the new things are out there, um, and staying on top of stuff. So I never heard anyone say I I got into real estate because I love doing paperwork. No. <laughs> that doesn't get disclosed <laughs> until you are. Oh, Raymond's got <laughs> Raymond loves doing paperwork. I take that back. He is he's a systems guy. So he really excels at, at putting those systems in place. But most people don't understand just how much paperwork you're doing when you're in real estate. There, there really is a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things I'm always kind of saying is that we are sometimes guilty of shielding our clients from exactly how much we are doing behind the scenes. <laughs> yes. You know, we've, whether they say it was a difficult transaction or an easy transaction, there was so much more work than what they understand. And that, that's that's kind of what we do. Yeah, you know? we want it to be something that feels comfortable and where they're not having to carry the stress of a transaction. Yeah. And so I think that is kind of our job to shield them from that. Um, but yeah, there, there's a, an immense amount of accountability that you have when you are an agent because we do have fiduciary duties to our clients and we take that really seriously. We do. And, you know, something that we were discussing a little bit earlier was, you know, that fiduciary duty, um, you know, again, when you're out there looking for a great agent and how do you choose a great agent, somebody that's going to advocate for you. But what concerns me sometimes is that I, sometimes I think that agents can lose sight of what it means to mm -hmm. advocate for your client. Um, does it mean that I beat up the other party and just ring them out to get, you know, five more dollars out of them for the client? You know, I guess sometimes if that's the direction that we're given from the client, but it's not about winning. Like the most important thing that we have to know is, you know, it, I, sometimes I picture, you know, some people getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror like, uh, Rock, like De Niro, <laughs> you know, in the mirror, like, are you looking at me? You know, th that's not what we're here for. So I like for people to remember that our clients only came to us for one thing, okay? And that is to buy or sell a house. Like they had that goal in mind. Mm -hmm. So when we get lost in, I'm advocating for you so hard that I've beat the heck out of the other side. And so the other side says, you know what, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we haven't you know, advocated for our agents so or right. for our clients. So I think that we really need to think about that. And win-win, it, it's so important that everybody is looking for the win-win because that's, that's what the consumers, that's what the clients want out of us. Sure. And I think when you start the transaction, getting under contract is, is just the beginning. We celebrate that when you have an accepted contract. But that's where a lot of the work begins. Yes and how we handle the details of moving forward through the inspection period and and through any repairs and things like that. You know, you want your buyer, like you were saying, to get what they need, but you also want the seller <clears throat> to not be so offended through the process that they just go, okay, we're done here. We're not doing anything. Right. We're done. And and saying take it or leave it, you know. And part of that is is dependent on us as agents communicating well, and rem remembering that goal of whether we have the buyer or the seller. I think. Or, yeah. Sorry, Ben. No, no, you go. Just, I think we need <clears throat> to remind the sellers and the buyers that we're there for them. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes if they don't see that from the beginning, that's the kind of the thing that I'm trying to implore out to everybody who I meet, the guys I meet on the golf courses, the guys I meet at the Sands. Hey, if we are not making you happy from beginning to end, then we've done something wrong. And it's not about you knowing how much work we did. It's about you knowing that we did that work well. Yeah, and what I see a lot is, um, you know, that we want our clients to understand how hard that we're working for them, yeah. you know, a lot of times. And so I think we lose sight. You know, I, I had a, a story one time where I, we had an appraisal that came in low. And um, an agent, you know, came to me and said, 
we've got a big problem. This appraisal came in low. And so then, and we called the client to, who was the seller to deliver the bad news that the appraisal came in low. And so the agent was, was kind of, our, our agent was kind of wound up. It was a long time ago, many years ago. They were kind of wound up about it. And, and we got on the phone with the client and he, he proceeded to tell them, I'm really outraged and I'm so upset about this and sorry that this happened. And the, the client literally said, well, that, that's terrible. But the most important thing to me is that we don't lose this deal and we don't lose the house that I'm in contract with to purchase. Right. Mm -hmm. And so let's just do it. And, you know, the agent was then like, oh, no, but I'm, I'm so outraged and we have to fight this. And, you know, I just kind of literally reached over and muted the phone, <laughs> you know, and I was like, did you hear that moment that the client said, let's move, let's move right. forward. Her goals are to move forward. So that's when we say, I will prepare the document and we will, you know, we will move forward. So hey, sometimes we, you know, we talk, we're really trying to advocate with the best of intentions and in a pure heart for our clients. But we have to listen to what they really want. And, you know, I think that's one thing too is, you know, we talk about all the paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork involved. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done in order to make sure that the deal is the best for, for everyone involved. But we're really in the, the people business. We're, we're meeting with people. We're talking with people. We care about people. And we want people at the end of the day to be happy with what's gone down and to be happy with how things were handled. And we want those relationships because what's more important than just the money is the relationship. Mm -hmm. And the the contracts, all of the paperwork that's involved, that's how we protect our clients. That's how we take care of them. And so part of it is shielding them and part of it is letting them know, look, we've got so many protections in place for you. And we want to make sure that at the end of the day, there are no scary surprises. Everything's well done, well taken care of because we care about you. And sometimes we are tasked with giving bad news, but that doesn't yep. mean that we have to give it in such a way that that is We've all that be we respectful. can see. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to be big yeah, The entire purchase contract, the entire process is just a, a steady stream of opportunities for things to go sideways and for us to fix. I mean, that's, that's what we do. That's literally what we do. So we can't be looking at it as like everything is a disaster. You're listening to the I Am Real Estate Show. We're here with Don Geisler, the designated broker and CEO of MD Realty. We'll be back on the other side to talk a little bit more about real estate and agents. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We have Ray Smith, Santa Johnson, and Daniel Johnson. We're here with the designated broker and CEO of MD Realty. And some of the things you want people to understand as realtors, especially with our company, Johnson, the Johnson Smith team, is what we do for the community. And it's kind of important thing. Understand that being a realtor is all about, it's mostly about getting inside a house, but it's also about making sure that it's hard to sell a house if your community isn't worth people coming into. So all the work you do out in the community needs to be, uh, I think we need to make sure we're doing a good job in the community. And Daniel, you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the communities and stuff you're doing out there and what Johnson Smith team is doing out there for the community. You know, I think that it's just, it's a really good opportunity when we're in front of a lot of people to try to, take opportunities to build up the community and to be part of what's happening. Right. There's so much good that's going on in Tucson. There's so many organizations <coughs> that are just doing amazing things to try to help people and build each other up. And so it really is important to us to try to be part of that and to continue, you know, helping the community out and to to make people a priority. Yeah, we can talk about that right now. Let me look at a list of things. Arizona Bowl, Rotary Club, Junior Achievement, 100 Men's Day Give, Coaches for Charity. Those just are some of the things that the Johnson Smith team is all about in supporting the community. And I'm sure that Sandra has her own things she's doing on the side. Danielle has a couple of things she's doing on the side. And our designated broker, Don Geisler, has a lot of things he's doing on the side. But we're all out there helping the community. And I think it's kind of exciting. We'll talk a little bit more about that, Don. <laughs> Well, I think becoming, you know, one of the most important things is that, you know, for Indie Realty is we just want to be associated with being part of the community. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have to flip it right back to you guys that, you know, I feel like you set the standard for people that are active in the community and and care about what's going on in, in Tucson and the area. And, uh, you know, Raymond, you were the recipient of a very prestigious award over the past year. That's actually the, the Drachman Award that's actually 
you know, based for your efforts in um, in giving back to the community. And it just goes on and on. Can I tell you the are. most exciting thing about that was having the name Indie Realty behind me? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, doing that and, and letting people know that this is what we're about. We're new, but we're all about a community. We're, we're not, we all came from somewhere else. But indie realty is going to be the thing that's going to we think going to change things in Tucson. I believe that's why I'm that's why I'm here. That's why I, I advocate for it as much as I can. And we know we're looking for it. If you see somebody and you see us out there, give us a referral out there. Give us an opportunity to show everybody how good the independent real real estate company is. I, and I know you, there's a uh, walk coming up. Do you have any of the details on that? Uh, I don't have the details. I I know I'm participating. You're <laughs> participating. <laughs> Do you know what day you're showing up? That's yeah, the question. I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> but he will be there. There's also a business fair we're going to be at. We'll take a moment for a shameless plug there. It's at the Arizona Sands Club, which is located on the fifth floor at the U of A Stadium. And that's going to be on Friday, April 21st. We'll have a table set up there. You'll be doing a little recruiting? Uh, I will be uh, doing recruiting for, for agents, for people that are interested in, in Indie Realty and what we're doing. You know, but also want to you know, say loud and clear that this is an event that the Sands Club, the Arizona Sands Club, is open to the public you know, for this business fair. So I would really encourage anybody that's listening um, by all means, come out as, as our guest and actually take take a look at the Arizona Sands Club. Um, it's wonderful. <clears throat> it couldn't be more rooted in, in being part of Tucson. It's in yeah. the Arizona Stadium, you know, on the fifth floor on campus, um, you know, right in the in the heart of the community. So by all means, set that, that date and time aside and come out. And again, just to make sure everybody's heard, it is open to the public. You know, so come out and check it out. Yeah, that's on the 21st. That's a Friday from 11 to 2. And you'll want to park in the Cherry Street Garage um, or the 6th Street, six, six Street, six Street Garage. Um, and then the next day, there's the 5K run. And you do have several <laughs> agents <laughs> yeah. that are participating that's in that. That's why I couldn't spit that date out because I had the 21st in my head with um, with the Sands Club. But... And that is a 5K uh, run with heart. And there are several agents in the office that, that say this is really a cause that's that's close to their hearts <laughs> because of uh, family and, and people that they know that have been either affected with heart issues from COVID or from other other things. So we're love, we love seeing the office out there. I have to say, one of the things that I love about Indy is that the agents are so supportive of each other. Yeah. I, I, Daniel. Well, I was just going to say, you know, it's this run is a really great example. If it's important to one agent, then it becomes important to all of us because we all want to take care of each other and help each other and support each other. And when something like that comes up that we are really passionate about, we all want to support that cause because of our care for our colleagues. I and think that it's is, a really special place. And that is why I buy chocolate bars in the office <laughs> to support <laughs> my fellow agents. That's why I allowed someone else to buy and give my kids chocolate bars. <laughs> right. That's yep. why we buy our eggs from there. I mean, we had, we had someone that does ch has a chicken farm in there. I mean, we have so many people that are so talented in other things besides just sitting there and doing real estate that who have businesses that we want to support. We want to support each other. And it's easy to do that when you have a leader who's willing to sit there and say, hey, we're all here. And we're all in this together. And so, actually, Don, you've said that you want to see this kind of as a hub for people that are even related to the industry, that they can just drop in and, and uh, spend some time if they don't sit underneath a tree in the middle of summer trying to right. finish up a report. You've actually opened the doors and said, hey, stop in and we've got workspace just come in and hang out where there's air conditioning and we do and you know our our setup in there is that we have several kind of just community drop-in work workspace areas and yeah by and, and i've done that deal where i have sat under a tree in the <laughs> in the summer and you know you have your air conditioning running in your yeah. car and uh, there's no reason for that when you're in the area we're at uh, 7255 east tank of Verde road and I mean, we are open to the public. Like we, we literally want people to come in and check us out and see what we're doing. And, 
And it's a really beautiful office. So if you have not stopped in yet, do come stop and see us, and, and we'll give you a tour. We'll show you around. Yeah, we're, we're very proud of that building. Uh, Don Geisler did a great job of his, uh, I'm going to say, his ability to see how what, be, what is beautiful, and that's what he's done to the office. It is a immac- immaculate piece of piece of. Real I estate. appreciate it, and I think it's a unique and a little bit different. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. think we did a little bit different than what the standard, the core and thought process of what a real estate office looks like. And we are like located across from Udall Park. Do you want to give the number if people want to reach out to you and have any questions? Uh, yeah, you can always reach me um, at five two zero eight six nine two three seven six. Um, we love to get the calls. We love to talk to the community. Uh, we're always hiring uh, great qualified agents. Uh, we have a great atmosphere for that. And for people interested in buying and selling, you know, Ray and Sandra. And Danielle. And Danielle. And Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> we want a package deal I here. almost hey. did that on purpose. <laughs> I know. Hey. We want to thank Don Geisler, the owner and CEO of Indy Realty and also our designated broker for coming on the show with us today. We really appreciate the time, Don. I appreciate you guys very much. Bye. Hey, welcome back to the show. We're welcomed here with a a local a local owner. He is, and his name is uh, Michael Gag- Gagner, and he's the owner of North Men Beard Company here in Tucson. And we have some of his products. I hope you're watching this online. You can see some of the products he have out here. And I feel so embarrassed that my beard doesn't look anything like his. <laughs> but he's a long time. I keep, long, I long keep time. trying to get him to grow a beard, and he won't do <laughs> it. I've it. been asking. I tell I every, have to every guy I meet, I, I keep telling him, fight the tyranny, brother. <laughs> 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 I'm glad I don't have a beard like you. <laughs> I feel like that's a good thing. But uh. So, um. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about when the, when the company got started, got started Mike. Uh, uh, it all started when my wife made me a bet. About going on almost five years now. Whoa. In, in August, it'll be five years. Oh. So uh, she met me when I was in the service. So clean shaven. Had to be clean shaven. Which one? Which branch? Oh, I served in the Army National Guard. Oh, I thank started, you for your uh, service. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah no worries. Um, I started out in the Washington Guard and uh, ended up transferring down. Am I too far away? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was going to start giving him a push from the yeah. back. Right? Okay, I, closer to I, Mike. Closer I'm afraid to Mike. my voice will boom too loudly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got um, you covered, brother. <laughs> um, so I, uh, she met me when I was uh, come down to Arizona to do the border mission under Bush. And Courtney called me on a random phone call. That's my wife, by the way. If anybody doesn't know me, probably doesn't. That's my wife's name. Her name's Courtney. Called me on a random phone call. Fell in love with her voice and met her in Vegas. Fell in love and so on and so forth. The rest Short story. is history. The rest huh? is history. And uh, she, I'd been wanting to grow a beard because a bunch of my buddies all had freedom beards on Facebook and everything. That's what a lot of soldiers call yeah. it. They call it the freedom beard. And I was like, babe, please. Uh, everybody else has one. They look cool. I want one, <laughs> please. And she is like, you know what? Fine. If you can make your beard soft, you can keep it. So I did a bunch of research wow. um, and tried a bunch of different companies out there, really prominent ones. None of them ever made my beard soft enough. And I've got like this ridiculously coarse uh, beard. Like it's like 80 grit sandpaper. <laughs> and I, Honestly, I, it is, I mean, because this is an audio program, right? The beard is phenomenal. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do, thank you, you. <laughs> do you know how long your beard is? Uh, it's like halfway between uh, Gandalf and ZZ Top <laughs> right now. That's, that's the exact measurement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have the genetics to go to Zeus length, but that, I think that's where I'm sitting right now. And uh, so I try. I was like, babe, just give me one more chance because she's like literally shears in the like doing some kung fu to keep her off from chopping my beard off (laughs) and i was like just let me come up with my own formula came up with my own formula and literally in the span of two weeks it made my beard soft so i tell everybody that i talk to about this product that i get a chance to do face to face yeah that that is the one thing i can guarantee if you use it properly it can take 80 grit sandpaper and make it into (laughs) a teddy bear (laughs) so so yeah no and Ever since then, or I did such a good job, and my wife was like, "You know what? Just start a company." Started figuring out it's not as hard as it seemed yeah, to, and yeah. made a company. And here do I you am. have a, a local um, location here, or you do everything online? Uh, I do everything online, okay. but I do occasional events. Oh, I, cool. I go out to. I normally am out at the St. Phillips Market on Saturdays with my business partner Art. And hello, uh, Art. Yeah, hi, Art. <laughs> Shout out to Art. <laughs> and uh, we're normally out there at least three to four times a month depending uh during the fall season and then when in summer because 
That's the whole thing. I wanted it to be a natural product. Right. So I made sure everything I was putting into it is stuff I can pronounce. And <laughs> <laughs> there's reason for that. My main job in the Army was making stuff go boom before I left. Yeah. So, <laughs> so pronunciation isn't like my, my strong key. So like I, I just did like four basic high-end oils that seem to work out really really well and uh they don't do well in the heat and we mm. live in arizona right which is the closest to the sun that you can possibly get and so it doesn't do well during the day so we start selling out at the swap meet at night so whoa yeah and we we typically go out there during the summers two to four times a, uh, a month and just go out there interact because i like face-to-face -face sales with right. people that's that's like my my favorite thing is is informing people about the product because I can't count how many people are like, how do you use this stuff? Right, I, right. I've been using it for like five years. I'm like, you guys, for real? You don't know how to use it? <laughs> but I mean, it's one of those things where it, it started out as a fad and it's actually turning more and more into a, a cultural norm for guys that want to rock beards. Is there a system? I mean, once they talk to you, you got to use this thing first and this thing second or third. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when you're first starting out with your, like, what I call the baby beard stage. So baby beard is, like, day zero up until about six to eight weeks, depending on how fast your beard grows. I know some guys that literally they shave and then they have to shave again. So wow. it just, it's completely dependent. So between stubble to about an inch and a half, you do just oil. And you do, I tell, I built this to... Why, the way my wife says it, I made it husband proof. So I literally made it so it's a pump top. So you just one pump, put it on there. I tell people start with a, sorry, I'm putting it in front of my face yeah. as I'm talking into the mic. So basically <laughs> you put it and uh, go from mustache down to goat and then onto the sides with whatever's left. And then after about, I'd say roughly between an inch and a half to three inches, that's where you start using the bomb because you start getting like little flyers on the side and the bomb's meant to style and shape it down. So oil does softening and moisturizing the skin underneath. And then bombs for styling and shaping still has some moisturizing as aspects. And then the beard butter is for guys that rock beards. Burn like yeah. And that's mainly like a leave-in conditioner. When I was in the Air Force, I, I joined 81, um, I remember having a, we had, we had a little beard. Mm -hmm. But because of African American, it, it curls. Oh yeah, yeah. So it curls, it curls right back up. So how mm. do you get that thing to go straight, straight? That was always my um, thing. But then it curls up, and you get the. With curly beards, what I noticed was is that uh, having like a boar bristle brush, mm -hmm. and especially when it's first growing out, yeah, uh, yeah. for the the very dense beards like mine's kind of wiry, and but like a dense beard, it, it you have to have almost like a, a boar bristle brush to kind of work it down because it's kind of trying to grow back in yes and what yes. you're trying to do is train it to grow out and uh mm -hmm. over time if you leave mm -hmm. it alone then it won't start growing back in but in that meantime it starts growing back in that's like the worst yeah from the the clients that i've had i have had and i've had a few that have used the boar bristle brush technique and just trained it every day every morning doing a little bit of oil to kind of work it down into the skin to prevent yeah. it to dry out and then it just over about a span of like two months or something like that they know they were like yeah it stopped doing it stopped growing back in yeah guys we're here with michael gagner who's the owner of north men beard company it's a local local place here in tucson been there for five years uh and they do a lot of stuff for for your beards and they do it at, they do it at different places you talked about st philip plaza and also out at the swap meet so for one thing i will also ask you that are you having fun Oh yeah, I loved it. Like face to face sales is like my my thing. That is the thing I love to do the most because it, it. I like interacting with yeah. people, and I've got like this whole pitch for each thing, kind of <laughs> describing what they are and where they came from, and it, it's just I. My wife says I have an obtuse sense of humor. Yeah. So, like when I name some of these products, I intentionally name them to be ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's what I what I listen to you talk and listen to you and listen to what you're having to say is that you have some knowledge on this stuff. This is not something that's a happenstance. You have some trial and error, but now you're at the point to where you're you are the expert when it comes to having to get in a soft beard and, and keeping it and keeping it maintained. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you're looking to make your lady happy, ma maintaining the beard and actually keeping it soft is like the first and foremost. I know plenty of guys out there are no, I don't. I'm like, okay. Sure, whatever you say, Haas, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it It just took me back to when I was a kid. My grandfather 
scared me. Every time I saw him, he'd give me a, a whisker burn. Oh. And I mean, like, that was his mission was to grab me, pull me in, and give me a whisker burn. And I never spoke to the man, I don't think, because mm-hmm. I was terrified of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I had forgotten that until we're sitting here. I'm wondering in your sales pitch, how many people ask if they can feel your beard? Uh, quite a few. And wow. I just tell them, go ahead and touch it. Yeah. It's one of those things. Courtney has an understanding. I'm selling <laughs> beard oil. People are allowed to touch my face. <laughs> and she's actually been out there. We, we recently went to the main Tucson market uh, uh, down the, uh, downtown on... Uh, the 4th Ave? Of, yeah, yeah, off of 4th Ave. Yeah. And we were down there, and she was held... Cause it was, a lot of people, so I needed more people. So she came to sell. I was actually impressed. She was just pulling people in. It was awesome. But I was, she's like, I never realized exactly how many people touch your face on a day to day. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> so, I wanted to ask the same question, but I was embarrassed to ask it. Yeah, so. no, I mean, you guys are welcome to feel it. I don't mind. <laughs> um, can you tell people how they can get a hold of these products? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if uh, you can't get a hold of me at one of the at either the swap meet or at st phillips uh we are online at www.northmanbeardcompany.com and i know that's ridiculously long but that's that's what we put and then uh if you can't get us there we're on facebook we're also on instagram and if you want just shoot us a message or if you literally want to text me directly you can it's 520-270-9474 give us that number again 520-270-9474. Five two zero two seven zero nine four seven four, and we will share that on our Facebook page we sure as will. well. Yeah, so if you didn't have a pen, you're in the car driving. Um, you can go to the I am Real Estate page, um, and probably by midweek we'll have some something up, and they can find you there. Oh yeah, Thank Father's Day is awesome. coming. Oh yeah, Father's Day is coming. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got enough ties. Mm-hmm. This, would be, <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is one of those gifts that not only is great for the man in your life, but you benefit from it as well, right? Because mm-hmm. we're, uh, yeah, that soft beard. Huh? All those wives out there probably yep. thinking about it. <laughs> Just yeah. go look, go order them. <laughs> hey, we thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, yeah. Michael. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. We would like to also thank our sponsors, Indie Realty, Inspired Life Mortgage, Rigo Pest Prevention, Pioneer and Title Agency, and Caring Transitions. And if you do happen to use one of our sponsors, would you let them know that Raymond, Danielle, and Sandra sent you? And uh, let us know how that goes, too. And again, one more time, give us your website and phone number. Oh, yeah. So website again for Northman Beard Company is uh, www.northmanbeardcompany.com. And phone number, if you need to reach me, is 520 520- Two seven zero nine four seven four, and that is Michael Gagner, owner of Northman Beard Company, local company in Tucson.